Hi, this is a very basic introduction to uh, WPF. Uh, WPF is Windows Presentation Foundation, which is actually used to develop desktop applications for Windows platforms. We have another option such as Windows Form, uh, which is uh, quite old and uh, uh, a kind of obsolete now. But there are several applications which are already developed in Windows Forms. So we will start with WPF uh, application development. Uh, I'm, I will choose a solution name. One solution can have several uh, projects. So this is a project actually. I, I will select a project name over here. So let's call it solution for YouTube demo. And I will call it WPF project and uh, I can choose a location where I'm going to create this project so this is the default repos so I will not definitely uh, create this over there so I will just uh, go to dotnet projects I will select this folder and then I will create this project over here also I can choose a framework the target framework dotnet framework version actually depends on uh, what kind of uh, target platforms uh, you are uh, developing your application for uh, let's say for example you are developing application for uh, Windows 7 platform so default .NET framework available in Windows 7 is 3.5 but there are several features which would be missing so let's keep it default uh, when you deploy your application it depends that uh, that specific .NET framework version should be available in that specific platform such as if you are deploying for Windows 8 or Windows 10 by default uh, 4.6 is not available in uh, Windows 7 so if you develop your application using 4.6.1 and if you run your application using uh, 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 in, in Windows 7 uh, having a default framework version definitely you need to install uh, .NET framework version a prompt will come up uh, for the user to install the .NET framework version which will actually divert user to the Microsoft website and user can install Dolphin framework version and then they can actually run that application. So let's create WPF project. <coughs> uh, it will use a template. Uh, these were actually the templates that you have just seen. So it will actually create a very basic project with a single uh, WPF window and uh, some settings uh, already and uh, if I run this project my very basic uh, WPF application would be ready for the running so let's for example if I see that over here uh, in uh, in a solution explorer if somehow solution explorer is disappeared you don't find solution explorer uh, you, you can actually search from here <coughs> solution explorer actually uh, contain all the your pro all your project explorer here it is so solution explorer is uh, the place where you actually see uh, a tree style uh, view where you can see your projects and uh, in solution you have one project you can add another project as well if you want uh, your solution explorer to have or your solution to have a multiple projects you can have uh, many projects you can actually select a project to uh, to make a startup project as well we have only one project so I don't have any option over here to make this project as a startup project oh yes over here set as a startup project <coughs> so by default it is a startup project but uh, let's uh, move on we have some properties such as assembly information that is information about the about the software that we are going to develop some of the settings which are actually the static settings such as some paths and uh, some uh, constants and so on we can actually double click and then you can actually write some strings and some booleans and uh, some basic uh, 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 things in the settings <coughs> we have some uh, references in references we have uh, some default uh, .NET framework library references added if you want to add any third party references you can actually right click and you can add a reference we have uh, a dot config file which actually specifies the dot .NET framework and the basic configuration over there app.xml file actually tells uh, that uh, which is actually a starting point and actually you actually specify over here which is, what is your startup URI 
in this case startup URI is uh, is a XAML file name or the window name that is actually uh, will be executed uh, when this uh, project is started so this is the very basic uh, uh, CS file uh, in which uh, we have an app class which is actually a drive class class of uh, application which actually reside inside system dot windows dot application but we don't need to worry about this uh, we might be using this uh, if we have multiple windows and we want to change our startup URI which means we want to launch as uh, another window at the time of startup so uh, this is actually our main window I can let's say minimize all of these and I go back over here so this is our actually main window if I close all of these and if I double click on this I see a designer over here and I see a XAML. XAML is a, a extensible application markup language which is actually used in modern platforms such as Android and other platforms maybe uh, they actually use this uh, XAML style or XML style uh, tags to design your UI and you whatever you specify or drag and drop anything over here you see a corresponding code or generated over here and this is the place where uh, we can actually write directly XAML code and uh, uh, we can uh, see the output over here but in uh, Visual Studio I am using uh, uh, 2017 version over here <laughs> right now but uh, there's uh, even 2019 is available uh, this feature is available even uh, we used to do 2013 uh, this is our window if I select this window uh, over here I can zoom in let's say so this is our window and we have some properties of our window such as a uh, height and width and this window has a grid and I actually added mistakenly this uh, this uh, columns uh, we can discuss this later on and we have some other options I can zoom in and I can also uh, uh, show a kind of grid uh, just like any uh, grid that we see in, an, in any designing software or it <coughs> And if I want to switch between the design and the XAML code and I can actually switch them I can do that and I can actually minimize that from here and I can see this side by side like this uh, I have uh, this kind of uh, viewing uh, options over here so and I can actually if I'm using uh, a mouse I can actually zoom in and zoom out by just scrolling this window and this is a like basics uh, height and the width of the window so for example I make it 200 by <coughs> uh, 400 so this is the height and this is the width of the window and this is the title you see over here of the window first WPF app so this is my first WPF application and um, uh, this is a grid by default available so grid would be used as a container so grid is actually going to use or going to hold all the all the UI components uh, inside uh, uh, itself so so we must have at least one grid and in that grid we can have several other grids and several other containers as well so let's uh, go and see the CS file normally a window has a XAML itself which is actually a designer and uh, it has a CS file or C sharp file because uh, I selected the C sharp language so this is a C sharp file in which we have a main window which is our class name and it has a it has a constructor which actually uh, initializes the components and which is actually the dry class of window which is a system dot windows dot uh, Windows class and it will actually initialize all the components that uh, I'm going to define in a XAML <coughs> so let's go and see the toolbox again if uh, toolbox is not available you can search from here toolbox and you see over here this toolbox and uh, in this toolbox we have some uh, common WPF controls and some like all WPF controls over here where we see a list of uh, WPF controls uh, 
almost all the controls are available which has actually UI properties and we can actually use the property window to manage the property so let's uh, see some of the uh, controls over here so let's add a, let's say for example uh, a text box a label and uh, a button so we have a text box over here so I just drag and drop it like this or I can just double click on this it will place uh, on the default uh, uh, coordinates which is 0 0 in this inside this container so if I double click on this button the so button is actually dropped on the top of this label so this is my label <coughs> and uh, this is the text box and this is the button let's say for example I am going to uh, specify some <coughs> properties to this label and this text box and this button so let's explore the properties uh, uh, window over here so again if property window is not available over here you can actually search for it or if you know how to launch this property window you can do that so properties <coughs> so we have a property window control wp i can press this or I can do this so if I move this like this so I'm actually launch in a parallel fashion so that I can see maximum properties over here so let's explore the properties so this is the label and you can see the type is label and if I select this one the type is text box and if I select this one the type is the button so which is actually uh, uh, the class is available in the windows and uh, windows dot control uh, namespace and this is a label which is windows dot control dot label and uh, I can specify a name name will be used to access or uh, uh, call this um, control to our C sharp program so for the label labels are actually normally used uh, just to display the text let's say for example the content property would actually display the text let's say for example name uh, unfortunately I cannot actually edit this so I can actually directly go and see the XAML over here so I have a text box I have a label and I have a button and I can add a name over here and I can also add a content over here so let's say for example let's change, let's change the content let's say for the name property and we have a text box and if I see the text box we have a text property over here which is a text box so let's for example I make it empty and uh, <coughs> similarly for the button I have a content property which is uh, uh, show me or something like this and uh, uh, now this is uh, the text box and this is the button and let's launch our uh, first application I'm actually going to disable my antivirus so that it will not scan my application so let's run this So to run this uh, application we have two options one is uh, run uh, by default it will start uh, with the debugging mode and the second is without debugging so I will just show you that so this is our label and this is our text which actually takes input so I will write my name let's say for example and this is the button which is actually used so these are the very basic uh, uh, WPF control without any styling but if you want to add some style let's say for example you want to change the font you want to change the font size so I can actually search for the property over here as well <coughs> let's say for example let's go to the text and uh, I can change the text over here you see the list of font if you know the font name and directly you can select the font you can search for the font and uh, <coughs> so on let's say for example I like uh, Microsoft new tileway this is the font that I want to choose and I can choose the size for all of the, the controls that are actually displayed 
when I move the controls you can see an alignment guidelines and I, it actually snapped to the grid by default and uh, uh, it actually helps you a lot in the designing of your application and let's say for example even I can use a mouse to uh, do that and it's actually snapping the grid so I can actually turn off snapping to the grid so I can actually move them freely like this and I can use uh, uh, even a mouse I can uh, hide this grid and I can actually move it like this okay so turn off snapping yes now I can move it like this without snapping alright <coughs> so if I run this application I can see this UI and I can write some name over here and show me is doing nothing so let's explore some more properties over here let's say for example if I uh, press this uh, button I see uh, uh, a message box and which actually displays some message so I can actually reduce the size of this window like this and I can move these controls. I I can I can press Control key and I can actually select those uh, controls like this. And uh, so uh, this uh, button has no name, and this text box has no name. And if I go back in Solution Explorer and see my uh, C sharp code, we don't have any code over here. We don't have any even handler over here. So if I <coughs> double click on this, it will def it will add a default event handler for the buttons default event handler is a click event handler so if I double click it actually added a button underscore click method and uh, you can see over here in the button uh, that the click event handler is actually pointing to this callback function so this is the function which will be triggered on this click and let's say for example you, if you don't have this method over here or uh, this method does not exist so you will get an error over here so you have to be very careful that this method must exist in your c sharp code so let's say for example if i click on this uh, <coughs> this uh, event should be triggered so let's go and write something such as message box dot show and the default uh, uh, the minimum parameter it takes one parameter which is actually a string type of message so let's say for example hi I am clicked <coughs> and if I run this And if I click on this, you see hi, I'm clicked. So if I rename this, so because button is not giving me any meaning, so let's uh, let's name this button as something like uh, I can I can do this from here. Uh, my Visual Studio has some something wrong with the with the property uh, window. So let's uh, name it as uh, BTN. Uh, show so this is uh, the name that I'm going to use over here and I can actually rename it over here or I can actually remove this event over here. let's say for example if I say that I want to have it like <coughs> btn show and it also give me an option to add a new event handler so let's say for example if I say that btn show and so click should be triggered when I run this application so the problem is that btn underscore show does not exist <coughs> uh, in this uh, in this in this uh, class. So I actually either need to create this uh, a new function or I just rename the previous one. So let's rename this. All right. So now btn show is a button name and if I click this and I see a message now uh, I want to access uh, the name of uh, or the text uh, whichever is <coughs> input by a user so I need to have a object name over here 
so in this case I can have let's say txt name so I can actually I want to dynamically access the name so, so I can actually use this operator to access uh, a list of uh, all the components and the methods available uh, because of this uh, inheritance of uh, this uh, window class so txt name dot text so text property will actually help me to get and set the pr the property so like in c sharp we can actually use the properties to assign a new value and to retrieve the value of a property depending upon if property supports uh, get and set both things so if the property is get only which means that i can actually retrieve the content through this property and if the set only i can actually set the content <coughs> so i'm actually retrieving the name which I, which I will will be entered by a user for example John show me so the given name is actually John so that's how actually the things work and uh, this is the very basic of uh, WPF you can definitely um, copy and paste these controls and uh, you can actually work around in next video we will add some more buttons and we will see how we can do more things with the basic uh, WPF application.